that's just how legit this competition is. I'm gonna stop him for a bank run to get some gas and uh, I'm starving because it's like dinner time and we had no, well, I don't know, 300 calories for breakfast. Let's say with the milkweed and broth and then we had a pile of fish what I couldn't eat. I couldn't eat my share of it so I kept it and there it is right there. We didn't go through the drive through I'm going to eat this piece of meat. Because, to be honest, <laughs> if we went through the drive through I would not eat this piece of meat. Because that piece of meat does not look very appetizing. And as always, Jeremy will be the witness that we ate nothing going through town. Nothing. Checking text messages, though. Yeah, well, that's that's permitted. And uh, Jeremy insists he's fine, and I insist that my stomach is digesting itself. So there must be some crucial amount of body weight, fat, percent that your body decides that's enough. And I'm probably fairly close to it because uh, my stomach's empty nonstop. Even when it's full, it's not enough. Anyway, that's the update, and we got about an hour drive or so to get to the next location. It's really hitting the spot. They wouldn't want to go to, you know, McDonald's or something. Get like a pile of burgers. This is so good. Pike. Oh, look at that. Crispy pike with bones. It's like the Mick Filet. <laughs> You can't get real food like that at McDonald's. That's right, man. Could use a bun, though. <laughs> Peel it off, toast up a bun, mayo, lettuce, tomato, pickle, onion. No, oh, that's a bit much. It's bad news, you're going food crazy now. It's only been two days, man. <laughs> it's ridiculous. If you watch on YouTube somebody who's done a survival challenge, and they've gone for a week, either they're like Jeremy, or they're bullshitting you, because I'm only two days in and I feel starving. So I don't know what it is. Maybe my body fat percent's not high enough. So if the show alone's watching this and you want to put me on your show, <laughs> you count on the fact that I have to produce, or I'm not going to make it. It's only been two days. All right, so proof I'm eating it and enjoying it to the extent that you can enjoy pike after eating it for two days straight. All right, I'm good. So we're off on location number two now, and we've pretty much run out of everything. And we are probably not gonna reach the lake, but we stopped because there's uh, lots of choke cherries here. And so our plan of attack, after farting around with that deer, trying to find the deer, uh, getting delayed with the pike, and uh, getting gas and all that good stuff. Anyway, we, have our, we haven't washed our pots even, and they reek of uh, fish because that's what we've been cooking in the entire time. We didn't wash them because we figured just do it later. So I threw a bunch of sand in the bottom. Uh, if you've ever used sand before in your garbage bins, it works great. Any dry soil, throw it in. It eats the, a lot of the odor because we're going to have to have this by our, uh, by our tent tonight. And we don't have access to water unless we can find the lake. And I think we're running, like I say, we're running out of time. So we're going to use this. Uh, I happen to have a garbage bag, so we're just going to line it with the garbage bag. Otherwise, kind of, kind of be prepared. And we did scoop some water, uh, so we have enough water for tonight. But we might be camping somewhere in this meadowy area. Oh, I watch Jeremy pick. I'll talk about choke cherries. <laughs> <laughs> they, they sounds, go. Sounds fair. That sounds fair. 
they go quick. You can pick a heck of a lot of them in a short amount of time, but they have pits in them. And the pits you are not supposed to consume because they have a cyanide forming compound. So it's not advisable that you mash them all up. So the trick with them is to spit them out, which means that you can't consume the entire berry. So that's the drawback The, Of course the benefit, as you'll see, this picking goes really fast because they have gigantic bunches and you can pretty much just rip them off the branch and chuck them in handfuls at a time. So in short order, you can get gallons of them. And uh, if you're doing your wilderness living math, it's 150 calories per 100 grams of choke cherry. But if you don't get them in the right state, they're pretty sour. And even if you do, they're pretty sour. So there you go. We're going to try to fill that up and then we're going to chew them and spit them out by the fire tonight. And the more delectable treat, of course, mm -hmm. is the blueberries. Mmm, delicious. I'd be happy if we just did all this, this all day tomorrow. You pay us all day? Yeah, we don't even have to go fishing. How many pounds of blueberries? You go to eat. I'd try and eat 16 pounds. Would you? <laughs> As an experiment? Yeah. Why not? I don't know if I can quite pick that many in a day. Try it hard enough, you could. I guess if I made a full day of it, eh? If I was serious about it. We are going to be camping right here on the road because we ran out of time and even then we're still going to be scrambling we got to get two tents up and uh fire started because we have our raw fish we have to preserve so we got lots of work to do like all wild foods and foods generally there is a limit by which they can be stomached for some foods the stomach seems like a bottomless pit Two such wild candidates are the blueberry and raspberry, but others like choke cherries have a much lower upper limit. It was important for us to run these experiments. A much repeated theme of the Wilderness Living Challenge was whether we could meet our caloric requirements from various sources that were available to us and the quantities that our diet required. For example, choke cherries offer a high caloric return at 150 calories per 100 grams and is a whopping 34% sugar so the idea of consuming several thousand calories in a sitting is quite attractive. Choke cherries are quickly and easily collected. In fact, with just a little bit of collection time, several pounds can be harvested, and from a single tree at that. The plant puts out clusters of fruit that are easily pinched with one hand and raked into the palm. Provided one has a carrying container of sufficient size, it's easy to pick more than a few fillings. However, we found that consuming these berries in great quantity was impossible. Doubling down on choke cherries while pursuing other edibles such as fish was a fun experiment, but it was short-lived. It didn't take long before the berry was not something our stomachs would bear. We'd need to find another way to abate our hunger pains. It's worth repeating that choke cherry seeds are poisonous and should not be crushed or consumed. Using the tongue to roll the mass around in the mouth is an art quickly mastered. Spitting out the seeds at a nearby target can also be a fun pastime. While the name might put you off eating them, Choke chairs are readily consumed by bears, raccoons, and birds. They are also a staple item to many natives, including the Pawnee, Cree, and Blackfoot. For many, choke cherries was the most important fruit in their diet. Modern uses include jams, jellies, wine, syrup, and fruit leather. The most important rule for choke cherries is to harvest them when they are fully ripe. A tree should bear dark purple fruit for a few weeks before harvesting them. Fully ripe fruit will lose much of their astringent properties compared to their redder counterparts. Drying fruit into leathers also makes them far less astringent. In fact, doing so will make the fruit pleasant to most eaters. Yeah, I've been super happy with this one. What's this one? People it's, might ask. It's a two-man tent made by Vode, and I got it from the Outland Supply Company in North Bay. 
they have a good internet uh, site as well so you can order stuff from them online so it's a two-man it's under seven pounds I kind of like that all the uh, poles are on the outside because then they're not pushing on your seams right and it's really quick to set up this is the fly the tents actually inside and it's all clipped together so you can actually take the fly apart off separately from the tent so when you look at it from the end you can see like there's a layer between the tent and the fly so that's cool it's just like a gap and it's just got lots of really clever features which i won't delve into as we're rushing to get ourselves yeah i'm a hungry are you hungry yet um I'm getting hungry i don't know how you're not hungry but I think we're, we probably definitely want to get all that fish cooked up too, right? Yeah, we got to preserve the fish or it's going to it's gonna go bad. I'll preserve my half of it in my belly. <laughs> yeah, half of, uh, half the drive I was starving and then I ate that fish in the city and then I actually felt pretty good. Now I'm feeling hungry again, but not panicky hungry. I was panicky hungry when we were driving, so. Yeah. Aggressive hungry. Yeah. Like, yeah, and then that deer, we hit that deer. I was, I was good. You were what? I was happy. Yeah. No. Yeah. It would have been really nice. It would have, the trip would have not ended up the same way. We would have probably had to go back to the city and do it nearby. Yeah. But I mean, yeah. it would have been a different trip, but it would have been an interesting spin on it anyway, because we would have spent the rest of the time manhandling a deer. It would have been super interesting. Yeah. Anyway, I got to get my tent done too because we're losing light fast. I routinely woke in the small hours of the night to hunger for which it took hours for me to settle and return to slumber. It must have been my body's way to set its alarm clock for early morning animal activity. My body would scream at me to rise, wake, and go. My stomach would urge me, get some animals, set yourself up on their trails, wait for the sun to rise and catch something to eat for me. But our game loss prevented this from happening. While I would be happy to go hunting in the early morning, our local fall seasons weren't yet upon us, and I wasn't willing to poach a meal just for the sake of it. Even if we partook off camera, it would only serve to confound the variables of the challenge and so render it inaccurate. Throughout this challenge, we aimed to be transparent and honorable to our own ethics and game laws. This wasn't a true survival ordeal, and our goal was to do our level best to overcome starvation within all legal means. Thankfully, however, my hunger was less of an issue as time went on, and while it was noticeable during waking hours, it wasn't searing like it was at night. Instead, during the day, it would wax and wane along with foods I was consuming. Protein might satiate for only a few hours, and sugars from berries in large quantities were not much different. A large meal before bed ensured I was able to get at least a few hours of uninterrupted sleep, just enough to carry on for another day. Smoked pike. And mosquitoes are terrible here too. The lake's just a swamp. <laughs> We're eating a bag of choke cherries and spitting the seeds out. Which is a job in and of itself. And we've got to cook these or they're going to go rotten by tomorrow. And we'll have to cook them again tomorrow morning. We've kind of mastered this cooking technique though. I have to try it on some other fish species like perch and walleye and we've already tried it with trout, it worked.
fakes in the back. There I am. Eh, very eerie. Okay, so we got a hand of choke cherries and we're sitting by the fire and take the choke cherries and pop them in your mouth. And mash them around kind of with your teeth a little bit on your tongue a little bit. You got a little bit of a paste. And then work the seeds out and split the seeds out. It's hard to do it while talking. And you just keep going. Every one has a big fat seed in it. So for every handful you get about a third juice. So it's a lot of doing that. The damage getting his calories faster. Mm-hmm. There he is. He's eating fresh. How entertaining is this? A bunch of feral animals. <laughs> Some going insane, man. <laughs> Trying to win the wilderness challenge. Wilderness living challenge. Got one. Oh, doesn't that look delicious? Spoils for tomorrow. It's almost like we're getting ahead of the competition. If only we can convert these back into our muscle tissue fat reserves we have a shot of winning the wilderness living challenge beautiful and we will recook them tomorrow and eat them for breakfast and then do the old Gary face we have milkweed for breakfast which we'll eat and we will have also uh, choke cherries that will be roughly a complete breakfast because Jeremy's pretty sure, you're sure there's carbs in the milkweed, Jer? I think there's some, yeah. Yeah, there's, a, there's protein in there, right? Well, sugars are carbs, right? Yep. There's and the uh, choke cherries also have sugar. So we got protein, fat, carbohydrate, and some definitely some nutrients in the berries. So all is well. That's it for today. We will see what tomorrow brings. I'm marinating the fish too with all the sp spray. Marinated in spit? Yep. Choked every spit. Must be fascinating YouTube. Are you trying to shoot both eyes? Yep. Or I should just leave this on and make people watch 15 minutes of this. Because this is actually what we're doing hmm. in the past, right now. <laughs> Agonizingly oh. chewing. Choke cherries and agonizingly preserving our pike. And somehow Jeremy is not tired of this challenge. We just asked him. 
He said it was a great way to spend a week. Yes? Yep. Great way to spend a week. There you go. So next year, anybody who wants to come out with us, maybe we can make that happen. It's, it's a great time. It's an awesome time. I don't feel so hungry right now. I'm you lost. have to because we have lots of bite teeth. I lost my focus. Why is your focus anyway? What happened to you? It's because you haven't eaten enough. Oh, my camera is not focusing anymore. There we go. See, we're still here. We're still doing the same thing, even though the camera came out of focus. Look at all that fish, though. I mean, that's just, that's just, it's ridiculous. All down the back and down mm -hmm. the side here and so much pike. That's seven pike? Maybe, maybe eight. We, we still, traveled with one. We still got another pot. Oh no, we ate some though, right? Yeah, we ate one, at least. More than one. Maybe more than one, yeah. But that's uh, on a good, decent pike lake, which is why we moved. Because the other pike lake was not producing. And this pike lake on the way out, which was basically a pond. A Sasquatch out there? Yep. Good. A loony one. Oh, that's a loon. The other pike lake, which is a pike pond, which probably everybody overlooks because they don't think there's any fish in there. We just smoked them. And now we're literally smoking them. We figuratively smoked them, now we're literally smoking them. If the show alone puts me on alone, they'll get a lot of these discussions, so... Alone should seriously consider putting me on a show. Actually, an effort to be alone by two or something, they've got to come up with a different name. But, uh... Have like a duel alone. I don't know, I guess you got to come up with a different name, History Channel. Not quite alone. Yeah, yeah, not quite alone. That's a good one there, Jerry. <laughs> you want to send that one in? Not quite alone. And have a duel, because uh, Jeremy and I like to apply. I think we'd do a decent job with um, Jeremy's extra fat reserves and my <laughs> noticeably absent fat reserves. But if you give me enough notice, I will pack on a bunch of extra calories. Or a bunch of extra pounds. And then I won't have to be the hunter that my body was designed me to be. You can be the slumberer? The slumberer, the guy, the basket weaver, like you said. The guy who sits in camp and weaves baskets on his fat ass. No, I gotta be the hunter who needs to be mobile and chase down game at any notice rather than lumbering through camp making baskets. I'm gonna go hunt down the animal and conquer new land and bring back game. Good ramble, huh? And I'm gonna make you watch all of it, the whole dang thing of it. Because that's what you get when you get a little bit woods loopy and you are low on calories, but you have a few more calories now to spare. Kind of get a little bit of a buzz. <laughs> 